Hey Gorgeous, this is episode number 222. Hi, it's Steve Olsher here and you are listening to the Heart Sales Podcast with Christine Schlonsky. Enjoy. I'm pumped to have Steve Osha on the show finally. You don't even know how long it took me to get him on for you. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. We are going to talk about confidence and why Steve thinks that this is an ongoing battle. Steve Osher is known as the world's foremost reinvention expert. He is a 30 plus year entrepreneur, the founder and editor in chief of podcast magazine, the creator of the new media summit, host of the number one rated podcast reinvention radio and beyond eight figures an international keynote speaker and an in demand media guest. Well, I can't wait for us to dive in and to get Steve's knowledge and advice from this episode. Have so much fun. Enjoy. Well, I'm so super excited to have you on Heart Sales Podcast today, Steve. Welcome. Cheers and thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm I'm really looking forward to this interview because you have achieved such amazing success as an entrepreneur with you know, being a podcaster yourself, super, super successful, now just launching a magazine, a podcast magazine, which is super, super exciting. And we're going to talk about this as well. And have you always been confident? Have you always been in the place where you kind of knew you're just going to go out there and make stuff happen? Ooh, um, you know, that's an interesting question. Confidence is is an ongoing battle you know i um i'm not sure that that confidence is ever the right word like i don't i don't think i ever go into any entrepreneurial endeavor with with confidence or certainty <laughs> maybe i should um but no i um i don't think confidence is ever part of uh of my thinking i think it's always um, it's more about not wanting to live with regret. I think. Yeah. Like, like if I just don't, if I don't try it, you know, is that going to be worse than if I do it and it fails? Right. And, you know, failure of course is a relative term anyway. Um, but no, I mean, that's uh, it's just such an interesting question because I mean, right out of the gate, just get me thinking. Right. So no, I, I, I don't think it, I ever like podcast magazine. You mentioned that. I mean, right out of the gate. Right. So there, no, I don't, I don't have any confidence at all <laughs> that, that it's going to, to, to change the world or be scooped up for a hundred million dollars at some point or whatever it might be. Um, I, I would of course love for that to happen. And I, and I think there's a good likelihood of that happening. Um, but yeah, you just never really know until you, you put something forth and then, the the market will, will decide for you whether or not you should have confidence in that, in that idea. Yeah. Well, you know, so many entrepreneurs pr procrastinate or can't really ask for what they truly desire and have, you know, this little voice in their head that tells them, well, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe... I don't have the right education. Maybe I'm too old, too young, like all of this going on. So yeah. looking at someone who has reached a certain success level can be kind of intimidating. And I just want to see, or I just want to love for people to see that we are all humans, right? I'm not waking up every day thinking I'm going to conquer the world and today is just going to be perfect. Like sometimes we just wake up and we think, well, yeah. I don't even know if this is working or not. I'm just going to give it a try. And as yeah. you said, like not having regrets is a big motivator. What else can people do to keep moving to really go for their dreams? You know, it's, um, it really just begins uh, largely with having clarity around what those dreams actually are. You know, because I think that most, most folks who just kind of go through, go through life end up with um, just a, a lack of, uh, of clarity around, you know, what, what really is most important to them. And, you know, look, the, the truth of the matter is that not everybody needs to have 
uh, a big dream. Not everybody needs to have this, you know, this big audacious goal. I mean, there's nothing wrong with people just doing what they do and coming home and, and watching Hulu or Netflix or, you know, cable or just reading a book or drawing or doing whatever they love to do uh, and waking up and doing it again the next day. Right. So, you know, I think we, I think we put uh, a lot of pressure on, uh, on people to, to try to live to a certain degree uh, or expectation, if you will, that, uh, others have put forth and said, you know, this, this, this is what defines a good life. This is, this is what defines when someone is happy. And, you know, and, and I think that we have seen, and, and I know that we have seen um, time and time and time again, that those who acquire certain levels of, of material wealth, uh, certainly those who, um, are able to, to build, you know, big companies as an example. Uh, and even those who win the, the lottery, right? It just, the, the fact of the matter is that, you know, money buys you freedom. It doesn't buy you happiness. And, 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 and those who don't really desire freedom aren't going to be motivated by additional money, right? Because mm -hmm. it's the structure of going and doing something that whether or not they love it, it's just the structure of going to do it that fuels them and drives them. And so ultimately, um, it, it's, I think we're doing a bit of a disservice to folks to saying that, yeah, you know, saying you, you have to, to, to achieve your dreams because a lot of people just don't have a dream that's any different than, than what they have right now. And, and why shouldn't that be okay? Yeah, it, it totally is okay. It's just for those entrepreneurs who look up to people and see their success, right? They see them out there in social media. Yeah, but what, it is, what is it that they're seeing them? Like that's, yeah. that's, what the, that's what the real question is. What, what is it that they're seeing that they, that they desire? You know, is it having a thousand employees behind you in a picture, right? Is it having a, a big office building? Is it, you know, having the zeros in the bank? Is it having the, the car? Like if, if people can become really clear on what it is, like when they see that, what really is, is the trigger? What really is the desire? And then what is the emotion tied to that desire? And in, in almost every circumstance, with rare exception, the feeling that sits behind that is approval. Yeah. And, and, you know, also people compare themselves. They just see, well, I'm not there in my business yet, right? I don't have these employees or I, I don't have the picture of this, the car or whatever. And I, I think by sharing these success stories, just to inspire people to understand that everybody has walked down a certain path to get to whatever they have yeah. or whoever they became, it's like getting up each and every day, doing something that brings them closer to the bigger vision they have for their own life. Yeah. And, and again, just the, uh, the assumption is that, 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 that bigger vision exists or that that bigger vision is even necessary. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and again, that's what I'm asking you to, to consider is that what if it's not even necessary? Yeah. And I agree. It's not necessary. At the end of the day, we all want to be happy. It's not about the zeros in the bank. It's about how you feel. Um, uh, the zeros in the bank do allow you to, um, to attain a certain feeling, right? Yeah. So the, so the, so the two are connected there. I mean, I'm it's not more choices. It, it's, it's choices. And, you know, it, it's about really having, having clarity around the, the feelings that are tied to the zeros, right? Because again, who am I to say that your self-worth has to be defined in the same way that I define mine, mm. right? So, so that, that in of itself is, 
I think one of the, the, the hardest things for any individual person to do is to create that own defi- to create their own definition. And, and that's hard to do. Yeah. So would you, would you agree that it's important when you go onto this entrepreneurial journey that you get really clear about what kind of life you would love to live to then figure out what your entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial journey should look like so that it accommodates the lifestyle or the desire instead of, you know, creating yourself maybe another kind of job where you feel stuck. Yeah. You know, and it's so, it's so much easier said than done. Um, oh, yes, <laughs> totally. But, um, but, but I do think there is, there is something uh, it just in the way that we are wired as, as human beings, there, there is something to having clarity around what, whatever that, that finish line is. Even if you, even if you move that line, we are, I think we're naturally wired to excel when we have a, a specific goal and a specific finish line. So, um, so yeah, I, I think that that is absolutely something that, that will just go, I mean, it speaks volumes about those who uh, are able to accomplish a certain degree of success in their lives. Um, and, and time and time again, if you look at those who have, you know, who have achieved what we might look at and go, yeah, that's, that's the definition of success, it's because they've laid out a very specific uh, finish line for themselves and have worked until, until they got there, you know, and, yeah. and that, of course, really that, that goes, uh, it's universal. I mean, that could be, uh, in terms of the, the relationship that you have in terms of the, the body that you have in terms of, you know, just the life satisfaction that you have. Uh, I think it goes across the board for sure. Yeah. And, and I think the most important piece of it is that you come up with your own definition yeah. Right. It's not what your parents want or what your neighbor does. It's like what makes you happy, what mm. gets you excited and what, you know, kind of makes life fun and, and juicy to explore. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So when, when you look back, what was the very first thing you ever sold in your life? Um, you know, I've been... I, I have been a salesman, so to speak, for, for most of my life, right? I mean, I think, that we, I think that we are always selling, right? I mean, even from the time that we're babies, we're selling um, our, um, our parents on feeding us, on changing us, and so on and so forth, right? So, um, you know, I, I don't think there's any doubt at all that we're, we're salespeople at our core, uh, even, uh, you know, even when we go way, 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 way back to, to being infants. Um, but in terms of like literal sales, um, I was always wired as, a, as an entrepreneur of sorts. Um, from the time that I was old enough to, to pick up a rake uh, and go door to door and, and offer to rake leaves or uh, grab a snow shovel, uh, and offer to shovel sidewalks and driveways, uh, or when I was old enough to be able to afford uh, a lawnmower, um, to be able to, um, you know, go door to door again and, and offer to, to mow lawns and, you know, and so on. Um, <clears throat> so that, I mean, that, that started when I was very, very young. I mean, certainly in my, in my early teens, you know, probably 13 years old, maybe even a bit younger. Wow. And do you remember the very first time when you actually exchanged your services for money, how that felt? Mm. I, I think that the first first time um, that I got paid for my services, probably what I, I think it started in the winter. So I think the first thing would have been shoveling sidewalks and driveways. And, um, and so actually I was I was younger. Um, wow. Because the, uh, there, there was a, so I grew up in Chicago. Um, and 
the blizzard of 79 was one of our biggies. I think we had like 122 inches of snow that year. Wow. Or something insane. I don't know, it was 60 inches, 100, whatever it was, is a big number. Um, not at one time, of course, but over the you know entire winter, right? Um, and I was born in 69. So I, I, I must have been 10 years old then. Wow. So I was 10. Yeah. And going door to door with the, uh, with the shovel offering to, to shovel sidewalks and, uh, and driveways. So yeah. Yeah. And you know, not getting paid a lot of money for it either. Yeah. But uh, you know, how, how did it feel like when the first person, I mean, you had to ask, right. You had to ask oh, yeah. for the sale. Yeah. Obviously, you know, the environment was supportive. <laughs> right. yeah. So, uh, and, and people probably were happy that you came with your offer. Oh, yeah. um, but then, you oh, know, yeah. ask, asking for money, did you, did you have a price or did you just yeah. wait I mean, for just, what they paid or like, how did you negotiate? I mean, you started so young and I, yeah. I think there's really this entrepreneurial gene in you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so for just sure. Curious. Yeah. I, I, um, I mean, I'm sure I was thrilled, right? I mean, it was probably, I don't remember it clearly, but it was probably me and a friend, right? going around just door to door offering to help. Um, and yeah, it, it, it was, you know, just the idea, I have a vague recollection of he and I sitting around afterwards, just kind of counting all that money and, you know, and, and I don't know, we probably made 40 bucks each or something for that day. Cool. And, um, yeah. And at the time, you know, that was, uh, that was real money. So <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. Yeah. It was great. I mean, just, you know, anytime somebody says, uh, yes, right. It's, it's just, we were, we're wired on, on victories. We're wired on, uh, just that, that, you know, the, the serotonin, the neurotransmitters, right. The serotonins and the oxytocin, like, you know, all that stuff that just, fires off when, when you hear something positive, you know, that's, that's what we thrive on as, as entrepreneurs and certainly as, as people, right? I mean, that's yeah. the same thing as, uh, as just being, uh, in a relationship, right. And, and hearing yes and making someone happy and seeing them smile. I mean, it's, it's same thing. Yeah. So as an entrepreneur, usually you do not get yeses all day long. <laughs> so yeah. how, how, what kind of advice could you give people how to deal with no's? Um, you know, there's a lot of folks who, who teach on this and, and probably have better insight than, than I do. Um, one book in particular comes to mind, uh, which is a book called Go For No. Um, Andrea Waltz. <laughs> yeah, which is, um, which is an interesting approach, exactly. Uh -huh. um, and I know Andrea has, um, has her own thinking around that. For me... Um, I, I mean, I would just simply chalk it up to it being a numbers game, Yeah. you know, from the standpoint of you're, you're if you know that 20% of, of people typically say yes to what you put out, then it's just simply a matter of talking to the, the 10 people and getting the eight no's out of the way, right? As quickly as you can. So it's, um, it, it can either defeat you or it can fuel you. I mean, there's really no in between. And so then there, there are, there are days where it will, it will defeat you. And, you know, it's, you can be the exact same person. And on one day that no hits you in a way where it's like, okay, whatever onward, let's go to the next one. And on another day that no can just literally set you back and mm -hmm. put you in your chair and just, you just feel like, you know, why am I doing what I'm doing? And, you know, you can begin questioning everything. <laughs> and so I mean, it's just, it's perfectly natural, perfectly natural. Yeah. So how, how do you deal with the situation when it happens or does it still happen to you that some no kind of gets you more and you kind of have to sit back and think about it and process it. And if you do like, what, what do you do? Do you have, like a little ritual you could share or like the self talk that really helps you to get up again and keep trying. 
outgoing yeah. for the next yes? Yeah, I mean, to me, it as as crude as perhaps this this may sound. Um, to me, it's really all about data, right? And so, the the more data, the more intel you can gather during mm. that process of 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 hearing no, the easier it becomes for you to hear yes moving forward. So. Um, so to me, the, the process really is um, allowing people to say no and respecting their decision to say no. And then if they're willing, gaining an understanding of why they said no and, and allowing them to express why they said no. And, and sometimes, you know, it could just be as simple as, well, I, you know, I just, I can't afford it. You know, I love the idea and um, um, I thought I came up, you know, like, like in a strategy call, right? Like if you were, if you were uh, an expert in a particular arena and you offer strategy calls to help someone and as part of that strategy session, you know, where you do help them and then you turn around and at the end you say, well, you know, glad this was helpful for you, you know, not in these words, but you know, would you like more of this? And if the answer is, no, I got what I needed, you know, okay, right? But more often than not, um, there, there's another step that someone can take with you and your company. It's just simply a matter of identifying what that step is. So it's not always a no to, to you or to your company. It may just be a no to that particular offer. And, um, and that's where the, the data really comes into play is just getting, you know, an understanding of, of what are they really saying no to. And, and that always is very, very helpful. Yeah. I, and I think it's crucial for you to understand, to move forward, that you collect the data, that you dare to ask why it was a no, so you can learn from it. Yeah. And yeah. And then one thing, obviously not taking it personal because it's not about you. Yeah. As a person, it's just what you had to offer. And I yeah, see lots of exactly. people having really difficulties with it because they do take it personal and they see it as a rejection for themselves. And this makes it even harder. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, for this episode, I would, you know, just love to point people to your amazing podcast magazine, which they can find at podcastmagazine.com. Uh, can yep. you tell us a little bit what to expect when we go to have a look? Yeah, um, thanks for the opportunity to share that. We uh, we started Podcast Magazine uh, in uh, late January 2020. So we, um, yeah, we're just thrilled to to launch a, a magazine that's really for podcast fans. And so the uh, the magazine takes readers beyond the microphone and into the lives of. Uh, the podcasters that they love and the shows they can't get enough of. Um, but more importantly, it's really, uh, it's really about helping shows that don't have a chance to land on a typical podcast fan's radar uh, and, and give, uh, you know, give a window of, uh, of insight into so many shows that are awesome, but, um, Folks just don't have a chance to, you know, to hear them because they don't know they exist. So not only do we cover the, you know, the big shows that you have heard of, but you know, hundreds of shows in, the, in every, every issue uh, that you probably haven't heard of, but should be listening to. So yeah, it's, uh, if you think about, um, you know, like Sports Illustrated or those types of magazines, right? I mean, it's kind of the same thing. And uh, except this is all about podcasts and podcast culture and the, the lifestyle of podcasting. I love it. So I, I'm going to put this for sure in the show notes so people can check it out and subscribe. Yeah, learn more about this fascinating podcast world and all the mm -hmm. things they might miss out because they haven't discovered it yet. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for your time. I'm really looking forward to our second episode. I have a ton of more questions, so I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk to you more. Sounds good. I hope you really liked that episode and I found it so interesting that for Steve, even with that much experience, with such amazing successes he celebrated and with everything he has brought into the world, that confidence still is like an up and down journey. And I hope it also inspires you to see that you sometimes have 
to try things. You have to see if it works or if it doesn't work, if you can tweak it or if you have to let it go. And uh, I just I just loved what Steve shared today and I hope you loved it too. So hop on over to christineschlonsky.com for the show notes. You will find the transcripts. All the links to Steve are right there. It's just one click away as well as a link to the resources we shared. And uh, yeah, all you need to do to get your hands on every, everything is to hop on over to christineschlonsky.com forward slash podcast or christineschlonsky.com and find the podcast tab. And you have everything you need right there. And once you're over there, make sure you sign up for the empowerment notes. This will give you an update on the podcast. I will share amazing content with you, special offers, special invitations to trainings or webinars or special online events, as well as content I usually do not share on social media. So hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, have fun, and yeah, can't wait for you to tune into the next episode. We will be having Steve back for episode 223, and we're going to talk about choose who you want to be today. And I can tell you, you will really have fun with this episode. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in this beautiful world, and I'm saying bye for now. Bye.